Hi, good morning. Good morning. I'm going to ask you a few questions and then jump into the Parks and Rec questions. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, you went to college at Temple University where you studied journalism, which had introduced you to the world of politics. What made you decide to get involved with politics and what made you decide to stay? Good question because I did change fields. I went to Temple for two years and dropped out. I was going to be a broadcast journalism major. Um, <clears throat> but prior to that, I was writing for a small neighborhood paper and I convinced my editor to write around community issues and politics. Um, and so my first article was on political corruption. And I actually got sued. I was 17 years old. And at that point, my editor said, either you stay in journalism or you get out of it. <clears throat> but I used that time while I was working for the Community Focus, which was in my uh, neighborhood of Hunting Park. Uh, it was a bilingual paper. And I covered the election of Marion Tasco and Shirley Gregory, two African-American women running to be my council person. And so that introduced me to politics because when Marion Tasco won, she offered me a job. Interesting. <laughs> As young black girl living in North Philadelphia, I worry about things like my classmates and me being gunned down intentionally or accidentally. How will your plan be effective in protecting us as kids? Yeah, very, very, very important. Um, and I encourage all young people to go to our website and really look at this. Uh, I also grew up in North Philadelphia. And I know that what makes neighborhoods safe is how we build out neighborhoods, right? The infrastructure. So we know blight removal, stabilizing vacant buildings, cleaning up the neighborhood, lighting and cameras help bring safety to how we feel about our neighborhood. So when you look at our public safety plan, we start there. We start from making people feel like their neighborhood's safe because it looks safe and it looks clean. And I think every neighborhood should have that. As it relates with, with public safety, um, with the police department, I believe that we should do more of the community policing um, that used to be done, walking the beats, right? Having police officers check in on commercial corridors. So I would prioritize that so there's a feeling of safety. You want to make our streets safe again by holding the government accountable, specifically the Philadelphia Police Department, like you said. Can you tell me what your plan looks like? Yeah, this is very, very important. Um, I'm calling for a public safety dashboard because I think Philadelphians deserve an honest conversation about what all departments in criminal justice do, but particularly the police department. So what would I change in the police department? Um, I've been chair of appropriations, which means I look at how people allocate their money, the mayor, he when, he when he comes into council. And so, for instance, I would bring a certified financial officer to the police department. What is What are we doing with the $800 million that we currently have? Because they say that we're understaffed, but we also have an overtime problem. So that means if we hired the 1,500 police officers, the budget would be a billion. So are we really safer? by hiring more or is this about how we deploy? Um, I would bring in civilians to certain positions. Why is a police officer serving as a receptionist at the police administration building? We're paying him $150,000, he's trained, we need him out in the street doing community policing. So that's what I would do. I'd bring a, a financial officer. I'd also bring a, a human resource officer because I do believe that our police need proper equipment and training to do their jobs the way I'd like to see them do it. Now we're going to jump into the park and rec questions. Okay. Philadelphia spends $50 per capita each year on parks and recreation centers. Baltimore spends $127. What amount would you reach by the end of your first term? So <clears throat> I'm looking to make some changes about what work the parks and rec uh, does. I know that we obviously we'd have to increase it, but I, you know, I want to, for example, I believe that all of our tree and our tree management should be led by our water department because they have billions of dollars and, tree, and the tree canopy is a health and an environmental justice issue for me. So with that change will allow us to invest more money in staffing and recreation centers and program staff that, that I'd like to see. So. I, would I do more than 50? Absolutely. How I would do it might be a little bit different than the current structure. Will you lead an effort to find dedicated funding for Parks and Rec? I believe that 
departments like the park, Parks and Recreation, departments like the Department of, Be of Behavioral Health, Department of Human Services, are the critical partner par departments in servicing folks, right? And we should not have a budgetary debate about how we invest in people, particularly if we want to move to an equitable city. We, in order to move forward, you got to go back and readdress some of the, the lack of investment that we've done in the past. So for me, you know, the, the, all these budgets are our moral obligation to the residents and particularly young people and seniors, our most vulnerable constituents. So we will um, aggressively ag uh, invest in people, not just programs. Understaffing of Parks and Rec hurts all, but the pain is not equally shared. How much, how will you make sure Parks and Rec is best serving our most vulnerable communities? So <clears throat> I'm the only a district council person that invested in every single park that they have in their district. Mm -hmm. When I got elected, I uh, prepared a 10 year plan. It was we're 15 years in, we're still not finished the plan. But at least the first thing I said was, we're going to have an aggressive plan for all our parks and rec. Because you can't take care of everybody's issues, but parks are spaces where you can bring young people and you can bring older people and create intergenerational opportunities for communities to come together. So for, from the first day I got elected, we came up with a plan and I had two dedicated staff people working on that. One was working on the renovations and our plans for renovations, and one was working with our, our recreation advisory boards and the groups that use the facility. So for instance, we, the Philadelphia Activities Fund, which is one of the ways we support some of the activities in the park, um, we had, when I got elected, it was only 20 groups getting that money. By the time I left, it was 200 groups. And as chair of appropriations, I doubled the amount of money that we invested. And those are the funds that help cheerleading leagues, the old timers league, all of the different activities that are in the park. And we make sure that if you were a good partner, that you got funding and support for your activities in our parks and rec centers. How will you make sure Philadelphia's 300 parks and rec centers are safe and clean? So it's really important. I think that, you know, as, as much as we've been able to do with rebuild, um, rebuild and the, the cost of rebuild has been because we've had a uh, historic um, defer, deferring maintenance, right? I believe that we should build out the rec and department capital program. And I know we have an internal program, but I would build that out. So we're fixing stuff right away, right? We should be training internally our parks and rec staff, for instance, to do the padding that goes is one of the most expensive things to a playground. We can train our staff to do that work and it'd be cheaper and then we can do it faster. We can train people to fix basketball courts and do that work internally. Doing indoor basketball courts, the wood and stuff. So I would invest in equipment internally and more internal staff so we're doing these projects sooner and we're not deferring them which then costs us so much more money and takes so much longer so i would support our internal team to do this work and then we would put it on a schedule every basketball court internally needs to be done every five years whatever the best practice is to properly maintain facilities do you see a connection between keeping our parks clean and reducing gun violence? Oh, absolutely. Not only is it about keeping the parks clean, it's making the parks accessible and intergenerational. There's nothing that makes a park safer than when you can have seniors and young people and young kids all in the same space, right? You know, folks, we can act up every once in a while, but when you have a good group of seniors in the park, People know how to behave, right? And so creating spaces that are culturally relevant, so the activities that are there are culturally relevant. Um, I had a large Latino community, but I had no public soccer fields. And so as we started fixing fields, we were like, we have to incorporate soccer. It's a $12 ball. Why don't we have it? Handball. I've put together more handball courts in my parks and rec than the rest of the city combined because I was responding to the young people that were servicing in, in the neighborhood. So they have to be intergenerational and they also have to reflect the communities and the community's interest. Parks and Rec, like other city agencies, face serious challenges in hiring both permanent and seasonal staff. 
what steps will you take to fix the city's challenging hiring process? I would take a page out of uh, the announcement that Governor Shapiro recently did in saying that there are certain jobs that shouldn't require a college education. Right. And parks and rec programming staff in particular, um, requiring certain degrees, it has to be health, it has to be. I have seen hundreds of volunteers run football leagues, basketball leagues, baseball leagues, who would be great programming staff, right, but don't have a degree. And I would create a pathway for some of those folks to come in and be some of the program staff that is there. In order to do that, you have to do some revisions in the classification, you have to work with the unions, but I believe that in order for us to draw those folks in, we need to create pathways. Then we also need better pay. If you're a graduate and you're graduating with a, with a, a loan that you have to pay back, our starting salaries do not make it possible for as much as you wanna be in the Parks and Recreation Center. And if you're a black and brown person with a big student loan, you can't afford it. And so mm -hmm. looking at how salaries and then where we can waive college requirements as people move their way up from an assistant recreation leader all the way up to a recreation leader and supervisor. Obviously, the front loading of those jobs um, should not require a college degree, but some training. And then we would help people get a college degree as they move up to supervisors in other positions. What are your plans to increase neighborhood jobs for teens and young adults? What roles will parks and recs play in your plan? So this is very important. I actually spent one summer running the Mayor's Summer Employment Program, um, and I was a participant in the Mayor's Summer Program when I was 16 and 17 years old. So I completely understand the value of that. I also worked while in my junior and senior year at MassBomb. I was part of the career technical education, and I got an opportunity to work for Cigna and Aetna in, during the school year and get paid, right? Mm -hmm. So this is something that is like really personal to me and I know we can do a lot more of. Um, so I would uh, work with the school district to provide paid internships for, for young people while they're in school, particularly if they're working at certain careers. And as it relates to the summer program, we would expand that. Why? I got an opportunity in one of the summer uh, opportunities to work at a preschool uh, program. I know parks and recreation counts on all the young people that come in during the summer to run all those extracurricular activities and summer program. So I would invest strongly in that and I would challenge the private sector to do more. They do more every year. The last two uh, years, particularly under COVID, um, as chair of appropriations, I advocated for millions of dollars more to increase the number of slots available every summer. I think, you know, right now, I think we have like 9,000 slots. When I ran the summer program, we had about 14,000 slots and we should have like 20,000 slots. And what does it take us to get there? I think we can do it in combination with the city and then asking the private sector to do more. How will you increase the number of after school activity slots for students? And what role will Parks and Recs play? So this is very important um, that the after school slots are funded through the Department of Human Services. Um, and we watched the department uh, change its focus on prevention, which is the, the dollars that are used for after school slots. And I'd like to see more investment in that area. Um, we, we spend too much money um, destabilizing families in the Department of, of Human Services as opposed to creating opportunities, right? So we have more young people in foster care and other places that is very disruptive when in fact the family just needs support and those kind of opportunities. We've seen uh, situations where parents are working um, and DHS may come in and remove the child because the child was left alone, as opposed to saying, how do we provide opportunity, daycare, childcare for this young person instead of disrupting that family? So I would invest more by changing the way we make decisions about when we remove children um, and families. Do you support Philadelphia's tree plan goal to reach 30% tree canopy in 30 years? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's one of the biggest changes that I would make. I would make our water department, I believe water is a right, um, and our water department has billions of dollars to create a more environmental friendly city um, through the creation of not only um, 
uh, tree planting, right, um, but landscaping of, of, the, of, of the city of Philadelphia. I think the tree planting should be added as one of the goals. You know, why are we overburdening Parks and Rec's small budget on, on tree planting when we can have it done as an environmental justice issue, right? A mature tree will suck up a million gallons of water. So it should be part of our stormwater management as well as adding our tree canopy. And right now those goals are separated when they need to come together. And again, the water department has billions of dollars and they should be leading this conversation. What steps will you take to reduce heat islands in Philadelphia? Will you treat trees to be a part of your plans? When I grew up in Hunting Park, when we first bought our house, we had an obnoxious sycamore tree. And the only reason I remember the, the name of it, Sycamore, is because we were sick of the tree. Because it was this di really big disrupted tree that went into our pipes, disrupted the, the pipes. And people started removing their trees, right? Because we had disruptive trees. We now know a lot more, right? And so I believe that now that we have better trees that can give us the kind of tree canopy shading that we need, we can go in neighborhoods and really invest in this way in a very aggressive way. Again, from an environmental justice perspective, tree canopies are important not only for heat indexes, but also for as we deal with issues of health disparities, asthma, and all of these things. So I would be a very aggressive supporter of adding trees um, and looking at green spaces as envi environmental um, justice issues and readdressing what we haven't seen in certain neighborhoods. When you go to Chestnut Hill, when you go to Roxboro, all you see is these beautiful trees and flowers all over the place. We all neighborhoods should have access to that. Mm. Philadelphia has a waiting list of 23,500 trees to be pruned or removed. How will you eliminate this backlog? I think it's so important that we do this. And again, I would have the water department paying for it. Um, right now, there's a pilot in the former district that I've represented where I'm working with, the, when we were working with the Pennsylvania Agricultural Society and returning citizens as a way of training them. And we're doing a pilot where we're taking six blocks. We're going to remove 21 obnoxious sycamore trees. <laughs> we're going to replace them with better trees. And we're asking, um, as part of the training, for the pavements to be redone. I think this is a model that we can do across the city. So what are we doing? We're working with the Pennsylvania Agricultural Society. We're training returning citizens, right? And we're fixing neighborhoods. So our money goes much further when we think more creatively around that. And I would do that on a citywide basis. Will you support continued funding of Rebuild? Yeah, absolutely. We made a commitment to the community and we have to comply with the commitment we made for them. <clears throat> what I would do, though, is I would make sure that we are paying, the projects are better managed, right, so that we can do more, right, with the money. Right now, it's costing us a lot of money per, per, per renovation because of the way we're contracting. So I would fix that so we can do more and provide more opportunities for neighborhood folks to have access to some of those jobs, which we're doing some of, but not as aggressively. But we've made a commitment to the city around rebuild and really refurbishing all our playgrounds and rec centers, and we have to do it. The same way we're spending $300 million to build a, a top of the Delaware Avenue, the same way we're spending $150 million in one park of, at FDR Park, we need to make sure all of the centers get some attention and again, build them accessible, intergenerational, um, that everybody can utilize. How will you expand recreation programs across Philadelphia? So we have a lot of great leagues that use our facilities that I feel mm -hmm. we need to be better partners on, right? Mm -hmm. So in, yeah, for instance, we have the Kensington Soccer Club um, in, in North Philadelphia, right? I would work with the Kensington Soccer Club to say, okay, you're providing opportunities for 200 young people. Well, how much would it cost us to do 300 young people, right? And then how do we give them access to our facilities so that they're, do they're spreading their programs that people like, right? Mm -hmm. um, right now, most of those nonprofits every year struggle with raising money. I would make them partners with us because I think they're vital to keeping the activity and the momentum in the park. As much as we're going to hire more staff for Parks and Rec because there is a staff shortage, I also think being better partners with those volunteer leagues is, is important, and a way to do that is to invest in them. What is your favorite thing to do at a, rec, a park and rec center? Oh, everything. Picnic, we, um, you know, we do dominoes in the park. 
Um, one of the things as we were redesigning parks, um, I, we were adding art to parks, right? And having local artists do art uh, at Fifth and Allegheny at the Rivera Center. We hired a local art artist that's going to redo the entire park. I really believe that parks should be branded um, and tell the story of the neighborhood. Right. And so that's from the color schemes that we picked in our parks. Those were our conversations with the neighborhoods because that's how people feel included. Right. Many times people feel like we're fixing the park for new people coming in, not for the people that are there. And that's why in that in those spaces, we get to brand the neighborhood. Right. Um, many times parks are named after neighborhoods. There's a reason for that. And so for me, um, being able to walk into a park and look at the color and the activities and learning that, that what that neighborhood is about based on that should be part of what all parks should reflect. What qualities are you looking for in parks and rec centers? Commissioners, and parks and rec commissioners. Well, we want some, you know, we, we need the energy. I've, I've worked probably longer with Kat, Catherine Lott, although the current commissioner than anybody else. When she was at the Fairmont Park Commission, we did a lot of work at Hunting Park. So we need someone like Karen, who's a, like, like Catherine, who's a cheerleader, um, you know, um, and really believes in these parks. But I also think we need a lot more diversity in the leadership at, uh, of the park so that it better reflects the programming that people want want to see. So for instance, I have neighborhoods where cheerleading was important, but we didn't have staff that could manage cheerleading. And um, we we have uh, in Frankfurt, for instance, we, we had a, a, a parade where we had bands and all of that stuff. And the staffing at Gambrell uh, didn't know how to help with the bands and all of those other things. So I think that um, I want a commissioner that embraces the diversity of the kinds of programmings we can have in all of the departments and that we can fund them. What will you do about short dumping in parks and empty lots? So I am a proponent of cameras everywhere. I, as city council, we worked at adding camera requirements to Parks and Rec and funding them. But I really think the city should manage a camera program. Parks and Rec shouldn't have a pr camera program that's different than the police, that's different from the streets department. And part of my plan is to bring cameras all over to make all recreation centers safe. Well, that's all the questions I have for you today. Thank you so very much. Thank you for the opportunity to share um, and respond to some of the uh, important questions about Parks and Recs. I think Parks and Rec add to our quality of life and it shouldn't matter what zip code you live in to know that you can have quality recreational programming. Thank you for coming. Thank you.